We're sitting in the window greenhouse. As you can see, there are no windows behind us yet. There's definitely some progress going on around us to the front. To and we got a sunny week all week, so I'll decide I might be able to get it done this week. Well, not showing you yet, though. Nope. Sorry, guys. We're just teasing you right now. Just hanging out in the greenhouse. If only this was a wide view lens. Hey, you can't say we never didn't. We didn't take you to the greenhouse. We did. <laughs> You're here. Okay. There's gonna be so much that you guys get to watch of the the progress later on. So it'll be worth waiting. This is my helper today. My face gets cold. I just. <laughs> Thanks, King George. <laughs> He's purring so hard. Hello. He's like, Burr, yeah. <laughs> Rub that scratchy beard on me. <laughs> I'm gonna have to make sure I stay facing the other way so you guys don't catch a peek. We want to be able to like unveil it and show you guys. And there'll be a little bit of an element of surprise. I'm really getting pumped about it. I knew with my building it that it would be really extra and beautiful because uh, that's just how he does things. I'm not as visionary as he is about projects. Like. I just don't picture them quite like that. I guess I have in the garden, like when I think of planting something, I can envision it being fully grown. But as far as building stuff, I don't envision it like him. So now that I'm seeing it come to fruition, I'm like, okay, this is gonna be really good. I need to pick some time. This is going with dinner tonight. Hey, Stinker, you're such a, you're such a pretty boy. This week is Operation Amend the Garden Beds. You gotta get it done. My list is long of stuff that I have to do, and unfortunately my time to do it is not quite as expansive as the list itself. Hey, quit eating my garlic. Quit eating my garlic. Leave it alone, come on. We didn't get much done this weekend because winter decided to come back, and it's been cold, but not just that, it's also been really rainy. Uh, this morning we woke up and it was sleeting and so I've mostly stayed inside. I did work on some seed stuff in the basement yesterday for a while but I'd had plans to work on the garden beds and just decided to put it off. My plan for amending the garden beds is to come in and for right now just to amend the spots that absolutely need to be taken care of. So what I'll do this week is go with my wheelbarrow of super soil and amend the areas where I'm planting peas, um, some kale and lettuces, all of those things are being direct sown this week. And then we'll kind of methodically start on one side of the garden and cover all of the other places. Most of it doesn't have to be amended for another six weeks, but I do need to get my direct sown stuff in the ground. We're almost out of these extra turnips that I've been feeding to the animals. Take some of these back to the pigs. Would you guys like a turnip? <laughs> they don't usually eat the turnip part. They leave it in the yard. So I'm going to tear off some of the greens because the piggies don't like the turnips. <laughs> That, that is a new layer. It's a little egg, and I have never gotten a white egg before. I don't know who would lay a white egg. Hey Gerard, would you like some turnips? There you go, buddy. Hey girlies. Oh gosh, honey, you ran right into it. turnips. So as you can see the pigs are doing a fine job of rooting up the yard. Gerard specifically is a master yard rooter as you can see here. He is making quick work of this. You want to say hi to our friends on YouTube? Say hi. Someone commented that they have possum faces and they so do. And they did even more when they were younger. It was really wild looking. What chicken do we have that could lay a white egg? Idea. There's a white egg in the coop. That's the first white egg we've ever gotten. Yeah. It's just like a really light brown egg. No, it's definitely white. What could lay that? That little black can, but is she, wait, she's not in the yard? She's not in there. 
I don't know. That's a mystery. No, I looked at every chicken in there. They're all brown egg layers that have all laid before. That is genuinely stumping me, wondering where that white egg came from because- yeah, That's really strange. We don't have a white layer. Now I want to go look around and see if there's like a hidden chicken. Oh, that little black hen, that little spart honing. We have a few chickens that are just wild that they do not stay put. We've even clipped their feathers and they don't stay put. And so eventually when they get wild like that, we just let them be wild. Um, and we have a little black hen that keeps getting out and running around. So I don't know why she, she's the only white egg layer on our property, but she's not in there. I haven't seen her recently either. What if she's like gone rogue living in the woods, but why'd she come lay her egg in the hen house? She wants to be part of the cool crowd. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> it's so cold out here. Like, <laughs> like Southern girl cold, not like Canada cold. Every time I say something's cold, you guys are like, ha, huh, it was negative 30 degrees today. And I'm like, yeah, I'd die. But it's like 35 and uh, I'm cold. So we're about to go up to the greenhouse and then back in the house. But first I wanted to show you all Maya's little, little thing here. What'd you take that off of? It's the door to an old chicken brooder we built. It's the first chicken brooder we ever built. Oh, okay. Yeah, I remember that. And we're not using them anymore. So yes. Took the door off. So we've been using this to sift out this compost so I can mix some perlite to it and make potting mix out of it. I almost turned the camera in the wrong direction and gave you all a peek of the window greenhouse. Yeah, I've been mixing my own potting mix because I'm starting so many plants and separating them out. And it's, uh, that would add up at $8 a bag. So. Mixing it has gone really well. That compost is really good stuff and it's already mixed with sand. So it's really loose and adding the perlite is uh, just kind of a precautionary thing. So far it's going really well. I'm really curious to see what the temperature is like in here. Eh, almost 60. Everything's looking good. Here I've got some strawberry runners that we were sent in the mail and I just put them in pots to get them perked back up and I'm gonna plant them in my tower garden once we get everything settled outside. I've been invited to take part in something really cool. Gary over at the Rusted Garden has challenged me along with Callie Kim to join in their tomato grow off competition. Um, I am historically, I think the least competitive person in the world. I just have absolutely zero competition in me. Um, I'm the worst to watch sports with because I just don't care who wins. I'm just thinking about how happy their mother must be. <laughs> like, really, I'm the worst. However, if I'm gonna get myself into any measure of competition a tomato grow off that's gonna be it so i accepted the challenge and uh we're gonna be announcing the details soon but we're actually inviting viewers to grow along with us and essentially are going to be um all starting on the same day and growing for the largest tomato as well as the highest yield off a of plant so i am making my choice now of what tomato variety i'm going to enter this with and um i don't know i'm, feel, I'm feeling pretty good about it i had some big tomatoes last year i don't know if you guys remember that but i do love growing tomatoes um i have been called the tomato queen a time or two there are currently you know a couple thousand tomato plants in this greenhouse with me i love growing tomatoes i love supporting other uh other channels i love gardening and these two channels Callie kim and the rusty garden are about as great as they come as far as uh gardening channels they're ones that i watched uh, before I ever had a YouTube channel. So it's a really cool thing for me to be included in it. Make sure you guys are following them to, to watch the progress of this. And I will keep you posted whenever we announce the details and the rules and all that stuff. If you wanna grow along with us and uh, post your yields and your largest tomatoes and stuff on, on our social media, that, well, I just think this is gonna be really, really fun. Now these won't be my go-to for uh, winning any contests, but I am so just enamored with these little micro tomato plants. They're so cute. I just think it's really cool how 
they already start to develop distinct characteristics when they're this small. Like for instance, see this, for, this variety back here is called a silvery fur leaf and you see how its foliage is? It's known for this really unique uh, wispy foliage and you can see it's coming in with that neat shape. And then over here, the wild spud leaf is coming in with this potato leaf just there from the beginning. And then these up here, these are our micro dwarfs, um, Pinocchio. And you can see these seedlings are just super stout and super compact. Same up here, these little mini bells, they're gonna be like just really micro dwarf little squirts, even though they're the same age as some of these other ones. And I just think that's really fascinating. I'm trying to decide which ones I'm gonna keep because I'm only keeping, I think, 10 of these. Maybe like 15 or 20. I have, I have, I maybe have 20 grow bags. I'm gonna put mine in grow bags, the ones I'm gonna keep. And how many grow bags I have is how many I'm gonna keep. But I'm hoping to get a little bit early tomato harvest that since I started these earlier and I'm gonna pot them up and give them space that we can get a harvest sooner. I'm waiting to move them up until they really need it. They don't yet. But also until the window greenhouse is done because I don't really have room for all of the seedlings that I'm having to separate as well as those in five gallon grow bags. And I really have to get my seedlings um, repotted. Some of them are starting to get leggy. They need to be, they need to be separated. Isn't this such a happy view? I just love walking into this space. I also very intentionally use colorful things because it just makes me happy for this to be a colorful space. Hey girls. Oh, Nestle, honey. You're going after it, huh? She's like, do I have a little hay on my face? Hey, May May. Y'all, Mayhem is getting really rotund. I just wanted to show you guys really quick what was going on down here in the basement. Now, I moved all the tomatoes out that I'd started down here. That's what we just saw out in the greenhouse. All those tomatoes were started here under the grow lights. I did get more grow lights the other day, but we haven't put them up. We had a friend that came and stayed here for a few days. And so, you know, I didn't want to blast him out with grow lights. So I just waited until he was gone to start planting more. And then I came down and planted all my peppers. I did move the ones that germinated on the paper towels into cups. So several of these will be popping up soon. And then I started a lot more in the soil. So these are all peppers here. And some of these have multiple seeds in each cell. Down here, these do have multiple seeds in each cell. These are all peppers. And here are some more peppers as well as some strawberries. And down here, these are all flowers. Um, and these are flowers as well. And for my fellow garden heirloom nerds that want the list of what I've started pepper-wise, I'm just gonna go through and read these off. Um, some of them I'm going to pronounce wrong. Just prepare yourself for that right now. Do you know that when I actually was planning my garden this year, there were some things that I looked at and really like second guessed growing because I knew I was gonna have to pronounce it, you know, in front of thousands of people. And I was just like, dang. They were just too good looking. I had to just go for it. So here we've got the Hascaria, which is hot. Sweet chocolate, that's a brown bell. Uh, not a pino, that is like a jalapeno, but without the heat. Chocolate poblano. Uh, the manganji sweet. Lemon drop hot pepper. Oh, here's one of the ones that I really thought twice about. Paradisum. Aluku sarga centes. That's a really thick walled yellow pepper. It's a sweet pepper um, that's kind of fluted looking. It's really neat, sort of like a short disc looking one. I, I, it was neat enough for me to decide to grow it even though it was that hard to say. Bridge to Paris, that's a neat one. That's a, that is an heirloom red pepper that they actually like untangled the genetics from being uh, an F1 and they took it back to an heirloom. Anyway, I, I was told a story about that and I thought it was cool, so I grew that. The Criolla, Criolla de Cochina. Oh. This looked very similar to the Arles Con Polio and I wanted to give it a try. It's a seasoning pepper. 
golden Marconi, which is like a, you know, red Marconi sweet pepper, but it's yellow. Poblano, Oda purple, that one's really pretty. I grew multiple purple peppers because I really like purple. And that's one thing you really don't see at the store very much. You can get some pretty good peppers, even at our local grocery store, you can get some pretty good peppers. However, I've never seen purple peppers at the store, and so anytime I can get seeds for those, I like to grow those. Here's the habanado, which is the, the habanero with no heat. Tabasco, if y'all remember last year, those were the ones that were so prolific. Red mini bell, my kids will eat those. It's just a tiny little red pepper. Phileas blue, that's a really neat one. Um, it, it matures in different shades of different colors and it ends on like a dark purple um, and it's really small, a little small hot pepper. Thai uh, barapa, that'll be one that I dry, dehydrate for uh, Thai cooking. Sugar rush peach. This is a really interesting pepper and I have been excited to grow it. Last year they all failed, but it's supposed to have a great flavor. When I was at the expo, this is one that won one of the flavor awards. So I'm try excited for that. The ricotto pepper, a friend of mine sent me those seeds. Uh, Spanish mammoth, the ahi cherapita. That's a really little um, fruity hot pepper. It's supposed to have a really good flavor. Sweet Marconi purple. Uh, Tapepo Gallo, Goat Horn, uh, Boaz Cow Horn, totes only grew that because I like the story of Ruth and Boaz, uh, Miris Biber, Cody Zan White, that is a white hot pepper, uh, Purple UFO, again, totally digging purple peppers, uh, Tobago Seasoning, that one's supposed to be really good for drying, Bishop Crown. The Bishop Crown is also called like a friar's cap. It's a really neat shape and it's a hot pepper. Not a super hot, but it has that super hot look. Lemon Spice Jalapeno. This is also Lemon Spice Jalapeno. These were all started on a paper towel. It's one of the only ones that did super great. Same here and I just went ahead and put these in their own cup because they were already uh, sprouted up on the paper towel. Buena Mulata. Shishito. A lightning mix that's really similar to habaneros um, but they're different colors that's more lightning mix Hungarian Magyar uh, that's Buena Mulata, Shishito, Ozark Giant that's a big bell pepper Violet Sparkle again with the purple the Violet Sparkle was one that made my list after I saw it in person at the expo uh, Red Cheese uh, Figatelli Cecilia Elephant Trunk Brazilian starfish, Tunisian baklaudi, corbachi, Zulu, another, that's a dark, dark purple, almost black pepper. Fish, of course, had to grow that. It's variegated, uh, variegated leaves and variegated peppers, so, you know, I like that. Uh, Tasik chili, aras con pollo, my, one of my favorites. Reza macedonian, I'm real excited about that. That's the etched one that has um, all of the markings on the skin. Lilac bell, again with the purple. Red Marconi, one of my favorite peppers. Pumpkin Spice Jalapeno, that's the orange jalapeno. Mustard Habanero, that's the only true habanero I'm growing. Craig's Grande Jalapeno, that's one of my favorite jalapenos. Pasillo Bajillo, uh, Bikino, and Pet Beaver Dam. You know what I'm realizing I didn't start is the uh, Czech Black Jalapenos. And I have seeds for that one, so I'm gonna have to go dig that out and and start those because I, I had this idea of wanting to do all the different colors of jalapenos because I'm planning on growing a lot of peppers this year, specifically jalapenos, and we'll actually use a lot of those. I usually do what's uh, cowboy candy, it's sometimes called, but it's candied jalapenos, and it's essentially jalapenos with sugar, and I think you do cumin. There's a maybe garlic, a little bit of garlic, but not a lot. And you essentially cook them down and make a brine and pour it over and can them that way. I'll show you guys more about this and share recipes, you know, when we're actually in pepper growing season. And I have it to show you. But I had this idea, I'm gonna do lots of cowboy candy. We'll eat that all throughout the year. Uh, we eat it a lot around the holidays as appetizers. I'll take it to parties with like cream cheese. You just take a block of cream cheese and pour the, or you know, spread out those candied jalapenos on top to eat with crackers. Um, so I, I usually make quite a bit of that. And then also just pickled jalapenos to use, you know, 
all throughout the year. So I had this idea of growing like the black jalapenos as well as the orange, yellow, and green, being able to can all those together and just having it be really colorful. And of course you would use them the same way, but it would just mix it up some. I thought that would be really fun. And because someone will inevitably ask why I don't have any super hots, things like uh, ghost peppers or any like the Trinidad scorpions or any of those, I do not eat super hot peppers. Maya does not eat super hot peppers. Neither of us really care for crazy hot things. I like a little bit of heat. I, I can handle jalapenos. I, I'll eat jalapenos and a lot of stuff. I like jams and stuff made with habaneros. I like things to be flavored with habanero. I don't eat a lot of habaneros directly. That's that's getting a little too hot for me. But as for me, like the habanero level of on the Scoville chart is about as high as I'm willing to go. And I think that's like 100,000 to 300,000 on the Scoville chart. And I, I can't do any hotter than that personally. And the other reason why I don't grow them is because I have young kids that just always eat out of my garden. Um, and they do double check if a pepper is hot. They will come and ask me, hey, is this a hot pepper? And you know, usually you can kind of tell by looking um, and, and they know that the big thick walled ones are usually the ones that are juicy that they wanna eat. But I would really, really hate for one of my sons to get a hold of something like a ghost pepper and take a bite out of it. Like that could be sincerely a dangerous thing. So I just don't grow them because I don't want them. I have no desire to have them and I don't want to grow them just for the heck of it. it. Especially if it means that, you know, one of my children could get hurt by it. Now these will take a little while to germinate even though they are on heat mats. For the most part, this, this is gonna be not a lot of action here over the next week at least. But when we hang those other grow lights up here at the top, I'm going to go ahead and start even more flowers. I need to go ahead and start my eggplants. I'm a little late on that. I don't know how many extra of those I'm gonna be starting because I don't know how soon they'll be ready. They might not be ready to sell by the beginning of April. Well, it's time for me to go about my day and get some stuff done. I appreciate you guys hanging out with me today. Um, I've got some kind of fun stuff in store for this week. This week is Benjamin's birthday as well as Toby's and um, we are really going to be fully focusing on all this garden stuff because right now what we put into it is really going to determine how wonderful it's going to be here in just a few months. So thank you guys. I bless you. Until next time.